Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. The unemployment rate in St. Lucia is continuing on a steady decline. An official trip to the United Kingdom secures major wins for the banana industry. The Babano police station receives ATV bikes to help in the execution of duties. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Aquino. The unemployment rate in St. Lucia is continuing on a steady decline. For the first quarter of 2019, overall unemployment was registered at 15.5% compared to 21.80% in 2018. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney made the announcement, added that youth unemployment from January to March this year also declined from 38.78% in 2018 to 25.9%. And if we then look at it in comparison to the fourth quarter last year, so from one quarter to the next, last, last quarter, which was really, um, I think that's uh, October, November, and December, was at 16.2% overall, and we've dropped to 155 and youth unemployment in the last quarter was 33% compared to this quarter of 25.9%. Honorable Shastney says the deliberate policies of the government are beginning to have the desired impact on the economic landscape. Government has been able to realize a drop in the overall deficit to under 1% while achieving a primary surplus of 2%. Prime Minister Shastney says the decision to reduce the value-added tax rate from 15% to 12.5% has proven sound. The projection even by the IMF was that we were going to lose revenue of $55 million. Well, the first year we only lost revenue of 15 million, and by last year we already had recovered that entire amount of money. But what I was explaining was it was not just the VAT tax. By reducing the VAT tax, what it did, it encouraged people to open up businesses. But more importantly, we argued this point that the money that we saved on VAT would either be passed to the consumer in the reduction of cost of products, and when you look at the, VAT, when you look at the inflation rate, some of that happened, but even if the businesses kept that, that difference, it would improve their bottom line. The first time in the history of St. Lucia that the government of St. Lucia has collected a billion dollars, it's actually $1.1 billion in taxes. What we did is we, we created new taxes and we didn't allow those new taxes to go into the central coffer. So when we say that we've taken the gas tax and we've lock boxed it, so it means that the money that we're generating, which is about $30 million EC a year, is going to now fi help finance this capital roadworks we're doing. And that was Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney. A recent trip to the United Kingdom culminated in some major wins for the banana industry. This as key leaders in the subsector ventured on a week-long market access mission aimed at forging new partnerships and broadening St. Lucia's market share for bananas. Here's Amanda Faye Clark. The delegation comprising the Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, the Agriculture Minister, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Barrymore Felicia, the Manager of the National Fair Trade Organization, Mr. Stephen Best, and the Coordinator of the Banana Productivity Improvement Project, Mr. Kurt Severin, led what they now report was a very successful trade mission where they were able to not only reinforce strategic relationships with key stakeholders in the retail industry, but also capture the interest of new markets, namely the French market. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Barrymore Felicia says, quite apart from receiving positive feedback from the French representatives and London-based supermarket chains such as Waitrose and Sainsbury, he is elated that St. Lucia bananas will now be exported to this new territory. What we wanted to achieve during that mission was to get the context and the, the constraints and challenges faced by those stakeholders on receipt of our bananas and to as well give some idea of what the St. Lucian context is what, what our farmers have to deal with on ground and what we do to produce quality bananas. Mr. Felici adds that the recent action plan for banana export does include provisions for branding, a key element to ensure the sustainable presence of our banana in these new territories. We had a very successful mission. We were able to get the commitment of the French to receive some of our bananas. In fact, we have a trial shipment going on now and we have 
some sort of commitment from Waitrose in terms of branding, assisting in the branding of our bananas. So all in all, we had a very successful mission. Manager of the National Fair Trade Organization, Stephen Best, says this is a huge gain for all farming constituents because under these new arrangements, an avenue has opened up to allow export of other crops. Possibility of exporting more, more uh, fruits because with the focus of the government in terms of productivity and expanding production, there is definitely a need to have the outlet. So this mission to the UK provided us this opportunity to interface with the key players in the market, to deepen the collaborative uh, process and see how this can redound to the benefit of, the, of our farmers in terms of not only producing the fruits, but being able uh, to market in accord with the dictates of the market in terms of quality and specifications and things of that nature. So certainly the mission is returning to St. Lucia uh, with good news. Meanwhile, the first trial shipment of bananas to the French market was completed this week. Honorable Ezekiel Joseph explains that while his government is committed to ensuring wider market access to our farmers, it is contingent on the farmers themselves to do what is necessary to keep their production levels consistent and at a standard which is competitive. As a government and as institutions, we have, we have the responsibility to provide that our support and we have been engaging Winfresh as to what are the possibilities and that's why we felt it was important to go up to the UK to at least interact as a government uh, under the leadership of the Prime Minister as a government and that is showing, that is giving a clear indication as to the interests of the government. The presence of St. Lucia and bananas on the French market is an indication of the opportunities which lay ahead in the Agriculture Ministry's mission to restore and augment the banana economy. 1,000 boxes of bananas will be exported weekly over the next three weeks. Once these trial shipments have been completed and accepted, it is agreed that 3,000 boxes of bananas will be shipped weekly to the French market. From the Information Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Faye Clark reporting. In an effort to drastically reduce the country's exposure to the impacts of natural disasters, the government of St. Lucia has been implementing several initiatives under the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, the DVRP. Hundreds of stakeholders recently gathered at the Chozel Secondary School for the formal handover of two climate resilient blocks by the Department of Economic Development to the Department of Education, courtesy the DVRP. Communications Officer for the DVRP, Lucius Doxery, tells us about another very important project that will positively impact hundreds of residents in Castri Southeast. Several small contractors are about to implement slope stabilization and drainage works in a flood mitigation program aimed to bring much needed relief to residents of Castri Southeast. Project consultant Lester Arnold, tasked with producing detailed designs for the work, says the Disaster Risk Reduction Initiative, particularly for residents of Mark, Bexo and Environs, is timely given the traumatic experiences which they have faced over many years whenever it rains heavily. This was a project that started about 12 months ago, whereby we first met with the com community of Bexo and Environs, um, persons who were affected by continuous flooding whenever there are any heavy rains, and we came up with the different interventions because they, they gave us the information. We went out, we did the site visits with them, we looked at all of the, 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 the um, persons who had complaints, we assessed it, looked at, we prioritized them and we are the phase now whereby all of the designs have been completed for those interventions and we're now looking to go to construction. We've met with the contractors, we have indicated to them what is the requirements of filling out those tenders because it is a World Bank project which needs to be um, tendered. Potential contractors comprising males and females were taken to every location where projects will be implemented. During the excursions, contractors were provided with detailed information on the specific interventions for the particular area. So we have a mixture of um, concrete line drains in um, areas that are virtually without any form of um, proper drainage, um, whereby you would have just had an earthen drain existing that would be heavily vegetated. We have slope stabilization for areas that are threatened from landslides and whatnot. And in that you will see um, interventions of different retaining structures, whether it be reinforced concrete retaining walls, given basket retaining walls, 
uh, mason routine walls and even riprap so these are the, the forms of intervention that we're looking at um, we do have some bioengineering to a certain extent whereby um, after the, the, the areas have been um, sloped properly or whatever the case may be and, um, glory cedar trees will be um, planted along the riverbanks and whatnot to help with the slope stabilization in addition to the site visits all prospective contractors attended capacity building workshops purpose to better equip them to deal with the tendering process the workshops also provided additional opportunities to seek clarification on any matters related to the upcoming projects key to the long-term sustainability of the projects is a maintenance schedule what we've noticed in the past is that once you have a project that is community-based and persons buy into the, the the projects you have a better um maintenance schedule in place in the sense that they, they've bought into it they, they know it's for their own good and whatnot and you'll see them participating in the maintenance of the drains in terms of clearing the drains um, make, making sure that it doesn't get silted up and things of that sort because this is not the first time we've done it we've done it under several another pro project called mosaic program whereby communities were presented with small hand tools and in the event of any torrential downpour um, you, you whatever silting that would happen you'll find persons would come out and clear those drains and whatnot so we're doing the same thing for, the, for the, this project whereby small hand tools namely forks pickaxes, shovels, wheelbarrows, and things of that nature will be provided to the communities. The EC $6 million slope stabilization and drainage projects under the DVRP are expected to last for six months and will generate employment for scores of residents in the targeted communities. Other communities expected to benefit from similar initiatives include Miko North and the Denry Village. This is Doxery, Department of Sustainable Development. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Le climat la terre a changé. Et ça a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros de l'eau et que la panne de l'eau a détruit les animaux et les plants. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud, il a tué les places qui se pressent dans la gravité. La mer chaud a aussi changé de manière de se pressent qui a quitté l'un côté et qui est à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué à un petit usine gaz en espace. Quand un petit pays, nous avons essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre de venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous avons tout le monde dans la terre, Kaboul et gaz, l'huile et le chèvre. Et ça a en écoute de la terre de venir à changer plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire actuellement même, c'est pour adapter. Nous faisons tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumée qui est naturelle. Bâtir caïnou pour abattre de mange en temps de cyclone et de l'eau. Construire un canal pour l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui le canal n'a pas les ordres. Nous faisons tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps de changement climat. Ça. Trouver plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger le corps et tout notre set les siens. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien and welcome once again to your update on happenings from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. Two more matches were completed as the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports Secondary Schools Under-15 40 Over Cricket Tournament continued on Thursday. At the Grosile Plain Fields in Mary's College led by a maiden century, from national under-15 player Darren Sami Jr. completed a dominant performance against Cicero Secondary, winning that game by 252 runs. St. Mary's College batting first made an imposing 291 for one in 23 overs, with Sami Jr. stroking a brilliant 146 not out, comprising 11 fours and eight sixes. Mikhail Jebatis made a valuable 68 before he was forced to retire. His knock included 12 fours. Stephen Abraham was the only batsman dismissed for 12. In reply, Cicero Secondary found a going tough against St. Mary's College seam attack and were bowled out for 39 in 12.3 overs, with Kensley Paul, 14, the only batsman to reach double figures. The leading wicket takers for St. Mary's College were Jason Justin with 3 for 17, Captain Jindel Cyril, two for one, and Denzel Frederick, two for two. 
at the Larry Suits playing field in the Marbella Valley, Archipol Secondary, led by another clinical bowling performance, defeated Clendon Mason Memorial Secondary by nine wickets. Clendon Mason Memorial batting first, dismissed for 30 in 9.3 overs, with Anthony Evans making 12. The chief wicket takers for Archipo Secondary were Royce Paul with 4 for 3, Toilie Charles 2 for 2, Taylor James 2 for 15. In reply, Archipo Secondary easily overhauled Clendon Mason's score, finishing on 31 for 1, with Zayda James remaining on 60 not out. Verquan Estefan was the sole wicket taker for Clendon Mason. A perfect balance is possible between sports and academics. That's a takeaway District Education Officer District 1, Cyrus Sipal, wants to leave with parents and students following the completion of the Inter-District Primary School's female football competition. Mr. Sipal feels it's important that this concept is widely embraced for the holistic development of children. So in the early stage, even at the primary level, we can make them understand that. And even, for example, I don't subscribe to the view that if the child is in grade 6, then they cannot come to participate in sports. No, all that is part of the development. So if we can get them to understand and they have to strike a balance, they know how much time for the sports, how much time for the academics, and how they can, they can marry the two, and then get them to experience success in all aspects of life, then we will understand this. It is anticipated that next year's competition will attract greater interest among the competing education districts. The Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan continues its support of table tennis in St. Lucia through a new volunteer coach, Roslyn Lee, who will serve as the only female table tennis coach in St. Lucia for the next year. The Embassy presented a 29-year-old to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on Tuesday this week. The Taiwanese volunteer told the media she looked forward to the full St. Lucian experience while coaching. Well, her personality is, is very bubbly, so you know, the, the, the kids embraced her immediately. You know, we had a, a four-year-old there as well, and she engaged the four-year-old and did stuff with the four-year-old, which, which was kind of exciting to see, being able to move, transition between all the different age groups and, 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 and hold her own. She also worked with some of the the better juniors we have, and we did sparring. I had sparred with some, she sparred with some, and then it was very intense. So the, the national juniors had a, a very intense workout yesterday with us, so it was very good. Lee replaces volunteer coach William Lien, who ended his volunteer service last year. Deputy Permanent Secretary at the Ministry, Liotta Charlemagne Mason, expressed appreciation to the Taiwanese for the continued support of table tennis in St. Lucia. I'm from Jules, a cafe. <laughs> yes, I, I'm Rosling from, uh, I'm Rosling, an international volunteer from Taiwan. Uh, I, I have been a member of uh, table tennis varsity since I was a child. And I am going to promote this exciting and healthy sport around the island. Uh, it's nice to live in such a beautiful Caribbean island. Uh, I hope I can learn more about different type of culture and uh, continue promote uh, a friendly relationship between Taiwan and St. Lucia. Thank you, merci. <laughs> Thank you. The introduction of a female table tennis coach on island means that the ministry can now dispense the full spectrum of coaching in the sport. That's all for you this week on Youth Development and Sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Babano Police Station has received two ATV bikes to aid in serving and protecting the community. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives and Parliamentary Representative for Bambano, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, with the support of business people from the community, on Thursday donated two ATVs to the Bambano Police Station. The minister indicated that without adequate resources, policing such a large constituency with rough terrain is difficult. As a result, the minister and the Babano community thought it fit in to contribute to the police resources. I'm doing this because the reviews that we are getting from residents in Babano is very encouraging. I can tell you since the opening of this police station, 
and recently the opening of the fire station, residents are satisfied with the type of support that they are getting from our officers. And through you, Commissioner, um, Acting Commissioner Daisy, I want to express on behalf of the residents of Babono, thank you, Inspector Bradley, for the work that you are doing in Babono. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs, Justice and National Security, Ricky Quinlan, expressed gratitude for the gesture. He indicated that such partnerships are crucial to the development of a community and a country as a whole. Acting Police Commissioner Milton Daisy explained that the ATVs will go a long way in assisting the police in delivering protective service. He also encouraged the police officers to exercise proper use and care of the motor vehicles. The public is expecting you to take care of them, handle it properly. It was given to serve them the service that they require, which they believe they were shortchanged. They have made it themselves to give you one of the things that government is supposed to give you and said, hey, government cannot make it, we are making it. So we would like to know. I wouldn't like to get a call. So that is one of the stations that I'm not expecting a call from for reporting officers. For I made a report and then I have not seen an officer and so on. So um, that, Mr. Bradley, I believe that is, a, although I'm getting good, good reviews from Babono, however, you still get the instances where persons are saying that we did not get the good response or officers say they come in, we never see them and so on. So I, um, I believe that is one of the things that would be eliminated. Businesswoman and concerned citizen Frances Severin also made a donation to the Babano police in the form of CCTV cameras. She explained that the police officers, while trying to protect the public, are in need of protection themselves, and the CCTV cameras will assist in doing just that. Inspector in charge of the Babano police station, Terry Bradley, expressed gratitude for the donations and reaffirmed the police commitment to ensuring the safety of all. Indeed, the ATVs will go a long way in assisting the police in traversing the difficult terrain of Babono. And like the commissioner said, it is an all-terrain vehicle, so it will also assist in traversing the paved road. And I must say, Babono has some real nice road. Five years ago, under the leadership of Ronald Phillip, this station was opened with the premise of working together with the people of Babono to make it a safer place. This, I assure you, is the focal point of our daily duties as we strive to provide a professional service for the people of Babano. Officers of the Babano Police Station will be trained and provided the requisite licenses to utilize the ATVs efficiently. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Novella Quayon. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information en Gouvernement St. Lucie, GIS. Assemblée Pays Télévision Nationale, Pays à NTN, Capositou Nouvelle en Quayon, Capositou Primus Hutchinson, Organisation Nationale pour Ménagement des As, en cette ci ça c'est Nimo, te tient yon jou atelier en Hotel Bay Gardens, vendredi, pour engager toutes les représentatives de secteur à PIA, comme c'est meilleure façon pour fermer l'opération si en cas yon des As national. Comme nous avons préparé pour approcher ces cyclones là encore encore, ces diverses agences de PIA te assemblé pour suivre sa value, comme c'est meilleure direction pour adresser cette situation. Là. Madame Lankin, vous responsabilité pour l'organisation, pour lui présent, Dorine Gustave, expliquer la façon de conduire pour attirer cela. 
nous sommes tous ces gens qui euh, nous brisent en chambre la Rodia pour dire nous qui ça y toi pe qui pas ka travail mané supposé um, ces gaps là ça nous brise fermé pour eh, um, pour nous ni en policy qui les nous ni place là fermé tout le monde à son même level là nous ka fermé place là à laisser là avec toute bagaille qu'a fait à dans manière parce que c'est pas ni moi qui ka dit qui mané pour faire rodia nous ka joindre toutes ces pas dans noir nous ka dit nous ka dit pour venir dire ça ou ou, ou trapper qui pas ka travail bien et qui mané nous fait peut faire travail primaire Madame Gustave déclaré qui à présent peuple a qu'a prend à faire des astres plus sérieux qu'avant mais parce que yo ja joue quantité bagay qui ka fait avec Dominique avec différents places yo ka coûter ti met plus les nous dit OK euh euh uh, uh, cyclone ka vini um, qui qui ka poche ça pou fè ou ka tapé plus moun nan dans ce supermarché a c'est tout plus moun ka la garder pour bagay pour pou, faire pou, préparation mais ça nous connaît mon ka dit pour toujours um, bi préparer parce que sou pas préparé c'est là où il ni pour faire préparation en l'air ça pas bon là j'ai en place il y a un programme pour établir protection à l'école au jeu ça là qui fait un ministère de éducation en pays comme antique avec babiola baba dominique saint kit saint nevis c'est pour ça avec les grenadiers etc c'est pour embrasser diverses manières pour ménager ça qui risquable en a fait des as c'est une chose une là car on renforce les capacités de secteur éducation en plan et opération. Le programme là a trouvé assistance finance par Banque de développement Caribla et agence de management des arts à Caribla, c'est demain. Les consultants ont été en PIA pour tenir une discussion. Et puis même le comité qui est responsable pour la protection à l'école et qui est les officiers éducation, les polices et le ministère de la Santé. Le coordinateur pour le projet est Bonnez Koudra. Car quoi qu'il consultation a aidé pour développer une web pour établir une bonne protection pour l'école à cette ci de votre désastre. Assistant de finances pour le programme Salaka Santé Horde, Banque de développement Caribla, en bas, Afrique, Caraïbes, Pacifique, les lieux Europe, déménagement, WIS à désastre. Naturel, en un programme CPI Cariform. Il y a aussi Greg Dessiens, un ministère de l'Agriculture, qui est-ce que ça pour recherche à façon qui plan à développer ça c'est monsieur Luc Emmanuel Jabay les cultivateurs assurance là qui projet qui commencer pour tester terre agricole à sous propriétaire qui porter un low bénéfice économique pour activité agricole de une discussion à ce programme là agricole mouvement monsieur Emmanuel expliquer qualité bénéfice ça porter pour les farmers et les cultivateurs en pays selon Emmanuel les yo marché c'est pour un test là et testé en lab, yo ka sa découvert se nourriti a ki te a ka manche et ki laisse an yo ki ka plus en bénéfice pour se dewe a. Ki le 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 fama ka produit, pour exemple, yo ni pour déterminer qualité traitement yo ni brise, si te a si, si eh ben il est trop en yon se qualité nourriti sa la. Est-ce que si te a si? Mm-hmm. Est-ce ça qui est important actuellement? Oui, et c'est ça qui est important. Bon, test si c'est acide soil. Bon, en test si a même ou ka trapper un chai problème because terre les tout acide c'est problème. Tout alkaline c'est problème. Ça veut dire c'est terre ça ka créer neutral point en mitan. En mitan. Mm-hmm. Pour neutral point là, laisse ça tout ça qui ni pour faire ça fait pli meilleur. Les terre si ou trapper dat même si e ni nourriture là, il pas ka avaler pour ces plants ça point ou ben joint li so on est pour travailler terre et puis la chaud right on est pour servir la chaud en terre pour lever un uh, pH là so that then les ça c'est nourriture qui est avalé pour ces plants et mon là c'est aussi magoué c'est information ça là qui a sur computer les cultivateurs qui ça trouvé toute information concernant recherche terre yo rod les officiers extension mais il a conseillé qui depuis on est tout tout nourriture a été abnibrisé et que tout est bien dans le obligé pour former bon ouais ouais ou bien ou type un plan ou quatre pieds d'art zig bête qui capte à bêter d'accord ça <laughs> est situation moins oui. même 
a experience it. Like tomatoes. Because I plant the tomatoes like a pH that is plus high than 6. It is about uh, 7.2. And I have to say that if I have a lot of tomatoes, if I have a lot of tomatoes, if I have a lot of tomatoes, if I have a lot of you can do it early. Let you harvest it. You can do it so you can create a longer shelf, shelf life. life right. Oui. Right. You can plant in certain so you can do it early. It's not going to be too late. So all these lavatiles that are there can assure that you have a pH that is correct. You have to have a pH that is correct. You have to have a pH that is correct. Mr. Madam, I would like to thank you for your help. I would like to thank you for your help. I would like to thank you for your invitation. Pour jouer depuis moi encore, si tu es la vie, tu as présenté l'autre nouvelle à Coyol. Tu m'as souhaité tout le monde une bonne fin de semaine et à présent, je vais présenter encore Nisha. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.